Good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased it's a bit drier this morning that we've not all got soaking wet through. Um, so we can thank God for that, really, that we're in a dry place. But welcome to our Eucharistic service on this sixth Sunday of Easter. The Lord be with you. We'll now light the Easter candle. Alleluia, Christ is risen. And now we will listen to a piece of music which will prepare us for our time of worship and service together. So as we come before God, let's just, just take a moment to think about the week that's gone past and think about the things we might give back to God and say we're sorry for and ask his forgiveness for. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. 
May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. And now we'll listen to the Gloria. And the collect for this week. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the line fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we listen to our first reading. from the Acts of the Apostles. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speak in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Could you stand for our gospel reading? The gospel reading this morning is not as on your sheets, it is verses 1 to 15, 1 to 8 from John. No, no, sorry. <laughs> it should be that one. <laughs> I see. I'm, I'll re-edit re anyway. my words. They should be as on your sheet, <laughs> not on my sheet, however. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, 
Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so, whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we've just heard, Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that you may have joy in you and that your joy may be complete. All sounds very easy, doesn't it? All we have to do to receive and live in God's love is to keep his commandments. When you think about it, the world doesn't keep God's commandments, although they're very simple, Ten Commandments, when you look at them. They're all for our benefit. Don't steal, don't murder, don't tell lies, don't be envious of one another, and love God. All very simple. But when you think about it, all the ills of the world have happened because nobody keeps those commandments. Our reading is part of a dialogue Jesus shares with the disciples after he's washed their feet and before he's handed o- been handed over to the authorities to be crucified. He's trying to prepare them for his absence and instructs them how to continue to live in his ministry after he's gone and when they no can longer see him. Abide in my love, he says these words. In other words, make my love the house, the tent, the shelter in which you dwell and move around in. Abide. The word abide means to remain, to stay. And after this year that we've all lived through, we're all familiar with those words, aren't we? Stay at home. Remain there. Lock yourselves up. Physical distancing. And we've learned and we know what it means to remain, to abide. When I was writing this, I thought, well, there's the opposite when we say, I can't abide that person. That means we can't stay with them. We can't have anything to do with them. Well, Jesus is asking us the opposite of that, to abide, to stay with him, to keep there. As I say, we've become very familiar with the inside of our homes. Every cupboard, 
every drawer, every nook and cranny has been emptied and tidied and dusted. We have decorated inside and out, outside work has been done. Everything to keep ourselves from getting bored and tired. As I often say, how many times can you dust the living room? It falls, the speck falls, and we see it. Somebody else was saying to me, oh my, my goodness, I sat down, looked up, and there was all the cobwebs. And now it came the dust to get rid of them all. We are more aware of the interior of our homes than ever before. But what about the interior of our minds? What about our spirits? Have we bothered to look at those, to inspect what's going on inside of our heads, our thoughts, our feelings? I've certainly read more. I've certainly tried to read the books that I've been putting off reading and to settle into them and think about uh, spiritual things. I've also knitted. All the family have walked around in winter with my knitted hats on their heads. I've even had orders from the boys as to what colour they wanted. I've painted, because I love to paint. Not painting doors, but pictures. I've set, I made myself settle down and do some painting. And I made up my mind that the end of this lockdown, would, I would be in a better place than when I started. So I made up my mind to turn off the TV for longer periods. It's so easy just to sit down with a cup of tea, turn on the television and just watch anything that appears. But I made up my mind I would do, not do that. I would switch it off for longer periods. Not always succeeded, but mostly I have. I've tried to discern what I read and watch. Have you done anything to change the way you live your daily life over this lockdown period? Whether it be great or small, it doesn't matter if it's only a little thing, as long as you feel more comfortable with it. On the weekly sheet during Lent, there were some suggestions on how to use the time for Lent for the betterment of yourselves and for the betterment of society. Did you take that opportunity? And has it made a difference to how you think and what you do? No matter our circumstances, this year has, without us knowing, trained us to have a sense of the depth of the word to abide. We have become more aware of the importance of home where we dwell and how we live within it. This year, home has made all the difference for the better or for the worse. It has certainly made me thankful for having a home. I have a place to dwell. I have a place where I am comfortable, I'm warm. I can do what I please. And I'm very grateful for that. This year has been both unsettling and challenging for everyone. I think we can all say that. At times we've felt quite down because we've missed each other. We've missed the company. We've missed the talk. We've missed just meeting together. But as I say, I'm certainly thankful for my home and being able to be here, to be able to come together to worship. It's lovely to see each one of you. Jesus' invitation to abide in his love becomes all the more striking. Jesus is asking us to allow his love to be the foundation under our feet, to be the floor on which we walk and stand and balance, to let his love permeate the walls that shelter us, and to let his love be the roof 
over our heads. Jesus is encouraging us not only to rest in him, but to make a nest in God's love, to settle down in it, to be comfortable in it, to get to know him. Stay in my love. Not only on a Sunday, but throughout our daily lives, whatever we're doing, we can stay in God's love. We can be mindful of God's love. Building a home takes time, and so does learning to love to be our home base. Saint Ignatius in the 16th century needed to learn how to abide in God's love. He, at one time in his life, he was quite a philanderer. And then he went into a war and he got badly injured. And during that injury time, he had to learn to abide in God's love and seek God's love. How to live God's love out in the world and keep God's commandments and remain in the love that gave him a new life, a new way of living. St. Ignatius was the founder of the Jesuits. And the Jesuits, like most orders, the Franciscans and the Dominicans, have a rule of life. And part of the Jesuits' rule of life is called the examen. The rule is not supposed to be a punishment. It's supposed to mean establish a rhythm of living which is helpful for being formed spiritually. A rhythm that reflects a love of God and respect for how he has made us and the planet. Nature. It helps to shed the old self and allows the new self in Christ to be formed. And we are all in Christ. As our acts reading reminds us we are all baptized into Christ. Spiritual disciplines are, meant, are a means of grace by which God nourishes us, feeds us. And the exonym is, I say, a rhythm where at the end of the day, while sitting quiet, TV off, thinking about the day, you're supposed to ask yourself three questions. Where am I experiencing fields of joy and peace? What through the day has given you that feeling of joy and peace? Think about it. And when you discover it, thank God for it and continue to do that. Question two, where am I connected with God? Again, think about that. What has brought you to that feeling of connection? And what has brought you perhaps for the connection to be broken? Thank God for the connection and give to God that that's broken it and decide not to do that again or not to work in that what has broken it and thank God Jesus is with you and the third question where am I experiencing sadness apathy and the sense of disconnection from God look at these feelings think about them and be honest with God he doesn't mind what you say or how you're feeling. He wants to know you in every way. He doesn't want to surface. He wants to know you. And say, well, no, I'm not happy. I feel ap apathetic about it. And I'm really feeling quite disconnected from you. Look at it as to why you're feeling that. And ask God to help you to put that right. We cannot rule other people's lives in what they do and what they say. All we can do 
is live our life according to God. And it's our responsibility to do that. If other people are unkind or not generous or just being downright obstinate, that's their problem, not yours, not ours. But ask God into it. Pray for them, bless them. And whatever's matter with them, ask God to help them put it right. And if you can be a help to it, then do. But we do not have to respond to that. We do not have to respond in anger or being spiteful back or mean back. We respond with God's love. We bless them. And we thank you, God, for them because through them we are growing. But ask God to be there with you to teach how to react in such circumstances. In all three questions, it's a chance to have an open and honest conversation with God about your life and to unburden yourself for the next day, ready with God's love inside you, asking him to be in it with you so that abiding in Jesus' love will become a natural as breathing bringing joy, peace, and grace to our daily lives. Amen. And now we're going to listen to the hymn, A New Commandment. The words are on your sheet. stand please for the affirmation of faith
Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with its love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Could you sit, please? As we bring ourselves together for our time of prayer and intercession. Father God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your church, worldwide and local. We thank you for the people who have brought us to faith. We ask a blessing upon your church, that the Holy Spirit will strengthen it and grow it. We ask a blessing upon this church, new church, upon all who worship here, upon the church wardens at this time of inter interregnum and of making the joint councils together. We ask a blessing on the PCCs and upon all who... God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gave the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness, through him who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. And we say together, we thank you. Have we got some notices? Alan, do you? And then I'll read the bands after that.
before the notices, can I just say how great it is to hear the organ in church again being played. The last time was Easter Sunday. Thank you, Richard. So, wonderful. Well done. Right, uh, services next week. 10.30 here will be morning worship. And there's a 10 o'clock service in the parish hall on Tuesday, 10 o'clock Tuesday. Um, my tomatoes have grown really well. They were <laughs> frail and delicate, and now they're less frail and less delicate. <laughs> right. So they're still outside at the front, and hopefully it's not been too windy. So please, if you want one, take one and um, give a donation for church. Now, uh, sorry, Rupert at the parish hall is looking for willing volunteers. I suppose the two go together, really, but anyway, he doesn't mind unwilling ones as well, to be honest. And if you turn up just after nine o'clock with a spade at the parish hall, um, they've ordered a skip, and I think it's some kind of skip-filling competition. They're <laughs> trying to reduce the level of soil at the back of the parish hall so that the... Uh, it doesn't become quite as damp inside. So, if you feel like a little bit of physical exercise, save your subscription by not going to the gym, turn up with a spade at the parish hall, Wednesday morning after nine o'clock. If you want any more details, get in touch with Rupert. So, uh, his details are on the sheet there for you. Right, so, a busy week. So we'll expect to see lots of horny-handed sons and daughters of toil in church uh, next week. You'll have recovered by Sunday after Wednesday anyway. Thank you. Now the band's from uh, Barbara. I published the bonds of marriage between Ryan David Cardwell and Jessica Jade Louise Trapmore, between Matthew James Thrall and Sophie Catherine Flanagan, and between Michael Andrew Huggins and Lindsay Chapman. These are for the second time of asking and if you know any cause or just impediment why these persons should not marry and be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it now. Right, that means that the weddings are going forward. So shall we pray for these couples that God blesses them? We pray for Ryan and Jessica, for Matthew and Sophie, for Michael and Lindsay. And we ask you to bless their preparations for married life together. May their love grow as the years go by. And we ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And now I have the blessing. And if you could just sit after the blessing and listen to some music being played, before I say the farewell. Rejoice for Christ is risen. He seeks us to rise with him. In him is our hope, in life, in death, and in all eternity. Today the risen life comes to us with his gift of peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.
in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.